Good afternoon and welcome to the Way to Wow shows, People Making Money. I'm your host, Kevin Bemmel, and we're here every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 3.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, and an hour in for Central and Mountain to talk about how to gain greater financial, uh, greater professional success and how to build wealth. So today, um, in, in light of what's been going on in the housing market, I thought it would be an opportune time to look at the issue of whether um, it makes sense to buy or rent your home. So I was talking to a, a friend of mine yesterday and he was Talk, he was telling me he's a residential real estate agent, or primarily so, and he was telling me that um, interest rates have gone up quite a bit, which which I knew, but to the point where a lot of people are priced out of the market. At the same time, um, and and you see reports of this in in the media, um, at least I do in the Wall Street Journal quite often, um, because housing prices have increased so much. Over the last few years, um, the cost to buy a house, when you add on top of that higher interest rates, has priced a, a lot of people out of the market. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I just said that. And um, because interest rates have gone up, people who have a low interest rate loan, they can't afford to sell their house and buy another house because they could. They can't afford the increased payments. And so there's a very low inventory of available properties on the market. Um, I, I read in the Wall Street Journal yesterday, I believe it was, that um, the estimates are that there'll be about 4.1 million homes sold this year, which is very low. I think it's the lowest it's been since the uh, late 2000s. And, and I guess one... Uh, one person uh, was in, was saying that they might even they might not even make four million homes a year, which would be an incredibly low sales volume. So at the same time, um, it it may behoove you to buy a house, depending on where you live and a number of other issues. And so I'm going to do this in in basically two parts. First part, I, I'm going to discuss some of the issues to consider when you're making a decision about whether to rent or buy your home. And then I'm going to take you through a financial analysis that will um, hopefully aid you in making that decision. I put together a form. Uh, it's it's an um, Excel spreadsheet. And if you plug in, I think there's maybe seven or eight numbers that, that you'd have to kind of figure out and plug in. And I gave you sources for those then you can figure out, at least from a financial standpoint, what may make more sense that then you can use along with the other issues that we discussed to, to make this decision. So I did put together a, um, um, a PowerPoint presentation because this is a, a complex um, topic. And, and so, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not... It's not a decision to just, just sort of, you know, make off the top of your head. And, and by the way, um, uh, I, I don't know if I don't recall if I've made this offer before, um, but if you want a copy of this presentation, um, by all means, let me know. I'm happy to send it to you. Um, and, and, you know, so that way you don't have to necessarily take notes, although, of course, you're welcome to do so. So, um, uh, you know, here we are. Should you rent or buy a house or a home? however you want to phrase that, okay? And as do all the Way to Wow shows, we deal with the three pillars of attainment. We're talking about primarily finances. Um, however, um, buying a home um, versus renting a home will have an impact on a lot of other issues in your life. Um, funds you might have available for play, travel, those kind of things. Um, you know what that what this means for your family um, and and even your friends and colleagues. Okay, there may also be um, an issue. You may have certain constraints put on you by by your faith, um, and and so that will 
um, determine where where you live, and so um, that that could also impact the decision. As well, you know, your identity and your mindset may come into whether you want to um, own a home or not. So, while um, we are going to spend a, a fair amount of time talking about the financial side of this equation, um, my advice is. Um, the decision is a lifestyle decision. It's it's not necessarily a financial decision. Finances are certainly an important part, but they need not be the sole determining decision. It really depends on what you want um, in your in your life. And when I say you, by the way, it could be you. It could be you and a spouse or or a partner. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm using that term in the singular or plural, depending on your particular situation. So I'm going to look at four sets of issues. You see them here. The real estate market, location, personal readiness, and financial readiness. And you can see I've left financial readiness till the end, because after we get through these categories of um, things to consider, then we'll go into the financial um, in greater depth. So let's look at the real estate market, first of all. So three issues here, and I, I mentioned all of them in my opening comments, home prices, interest rates, and inventory. So all of these have an impact on your ability to buy, as well as your inclination to buy. So if um, home prices are changing rapidly, and 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 rapidly is a somewhat relative term, um, but but certainly in uh, 2021, prop, uh, home prices were increasing quite quite quickly, even by historic standards. So, you know, is that a time when you want to um, be buying a house. Now, some people would say, well, wait, I, I don't want to be buying a house when the prices are going up. Um, I want to wait until prices are coming down. Um, that's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is if prices are going up and you think they're going to continue to go up, then you may want to get into the housing market sooner rather than later in order to take advantage of price appreciation. Price, uh, price appreciation in the home market. Okay, so prices changing isn't necessarily a reason to buy or not to buy. It's a factor to take into account based on what you see happening and how that fits with other, other issues and other plans you may have. Okay, so at the same time that um, prices changing um, may be an issue, Interest rates may also be an issue. Now, um, interest rates, while by historic standards are actually not that high, so it's not particularly unusual for interest rates to be in the 7% range. Um, in recent history, they are they are high. So just, um, what, a year and a half, two years ago, they were less than half. You could get a fixed rate loan in the threes. Now, that, that was pretty historically low. Um, and people... I would talk to people from from time to time, and they say, "Well, I'm, uh, you know, they they say, I don't know. I'm trying to decide whether to, you know, refinance now or or wait and see if interest rates go lower." And I would say to them, "Well, how much lower do you think they can go? Wouldn't you agree that the bias is is to interest rates increasing? So when they're at the kind of historic lows they were at." Um, it was much more likely that they were going to increase that, than that they were going to substantially decrease. Um, now what we're seeing are certainly interest rates much higher than they've been in the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so. However, um, still not high by historic standards. So when I first got into the real estate business in the sort of early to mid 1980s, um, interest rates of 10 to 15 percent were not at all unusual. Um, and in some cases, they were higher for buyers who didn't have tip top credit. So where interest rates are and where you think they're going to go is another issue to consider as you decide on this question of whether to buy or rent a home. 
Um, where do I think interest rates are going? You know, I'll get out my crystal ball, right? I mean, this this is sort of the sixty four thousand dollar question, um, and and the indicators are mixed. So on the one hand, we're we're seeing um, robust uh, job growth, um, and 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 that would indicate that the economy is is strong, um, and so that would tend to indicate that the Federal Reserve is going to continue to increase interest rates. Um, but on the employment side, um, I think six of the last seven months, um, the Labor Department has um, lowered the employment growth figures for, pro for the prior month when they released the next month's data. So although we're showing big job growth from last month, when this month's figures come out, you know it would it would appear that it's it's likely that the job growth wasn't as high as as they thought. At least that's been the current pattern, and there is a lot of consternation about this. I.e., why has the Department of Labor been so off so frequently? This real, I, you know, I, I don't think you've ever heard me use this word before. It's almost unprecedented to have so many months in a row of job growth lowered. Why is that the case? And there's, you know, tons of speculation. Um, but so far, um, the Labor Department has not come out and said, you know, for example, oh, there's there's a problem in our software or something like that that has caused the um, overestimation. Um, so on the one hand, that could be something pushing interest rates higher. Um, on, on the other hand, we have seen um, inflation come down from its high of, of about, what, 9%. Um, uh, about you know 15 months ago or so, um, and it, now it's down to around the sort of five percent level, um, give or take half a percent, and that's still higher than the Fed's target of two percent. Um, but nonetheless, it is down, and that's why um, I think the Fed uh, paused on their interest rate increases last last time they considered them. Um, having said that. Um, there's speculation going on that they're going to raise their target inflation rate to 3%. A lot of people argue that would be a mistake. Um, and so, uh, so, but, but other people are saying, well, it's getting closer and closer. We're going to have a so-called soft landing. And so there isn't a need to raise interest rates anymore. So if, if that were the case, we might see, um, you know, home loan rates um, moderate, uh, you know, at least a little bit. I don't think we'll see them go down to 3% in the near term, frankly. Um, but we might see them moderate back down into the sixes if that were the case. But, you know, those are just two of the competing factors that make it right now, I think, extremely difficult to predict where interest rates are going. Okay, finally, inventory. So there, as I mentioned again in, in my opening remarks, um, inventory is very low right now. A lot of people just really can't afford to sell their house. Um, and, and because they can't afford a new one, they can't afford to give up their low rate mortgage and, and they can't afford um, not only a more expensive home, but a more, a more expensive home at a higher uh, interest rate for their mortgage. So um, people, you know, the homes that are selling are where people have to sell homes. OK, so so, for example, I have a uh, the, the friend I was talking to yesterday, Bill Gross, he's one of the top probate. Um, real estate agents here in Los Angeles. And, and look, the, the nice thing about being in that part of the business is, uh, sadly, people always die. And so there are properties that need to be sold as a result of people passing away. So there's always business there. I mean, the downside is there's a lot more competition because all of a sudden everybody specializes in in selling probate homes, whereas you know th that's not really the case. It's, it is a very specialized part of the real estate business. takes a lot of additional knowledge, um, and and um, and so there's there's likely to be a sort of shaking out coming, um, but it is going to think take a while for people to realize that. Um, you know, all these people handling these homes, they don't necessarily have the additional expertise necessary. But, um, you know, for people who are moving because of jobs, again, they may have to sell, although um, 
remote work seems to be here to stay on some level. So there's there's probably fewer people selling their homes due to a job relocation. And so, you know, inventory, I think, you know, one would have to imagine we're not going to see a huge increase in, in home inventory, either in terms of existing homes or new homes. So new home builders are also scaling back because of interest rate increases. Um, they were able for a while to take advantage of the low inventory for existing homes, but now they're scaling back as well. So, you know, you so inventory comes down to both how it affects home prices, et cetera, but it also comes down to, are you going to find a home that you want to own, right? And if the answer to that is no, then, you know, if, if you can't find a home you want to live in and own, then maybe none of the other questions really, uh, you know, ha matter at all because, you know, you don't want to buy a house you don't want to live in, right? So so these are the first three factors in the, in, the, in terms of the real estate market to take a look at. Okay, next, location. So where do you want to live, okay? And where do you want to live in terms of city, in terms of part of a city, suburbs, um, you know, downtown, core, um, you know, all of those factors, part of, you know, region of the country, right? There's been a huge, um, well, huge. There's been a, a, a certainly a large outflow of people from California. I think it's been about a half a million people over the last year or two. Um, and the biggest inflows, it, it appears, have been to um, Texas and Florida. Um, and, and what's happened in Texas and Florida is they've seen their home prices go way up. So similar things have happened in the past. Californians have left and they've gone to places like Oregon and Washington. I remember going back now about 20, 25 years ago, um, I was up in Seattle on business and I was... Um, talking to somebody I think I think it was at a grocery store it seems to me and uh, and and the woman asked for some reason she asked me where I was from and I, I said I'm from California and she kind of got a little bit surly and she, I'm like I'm like I, I, I'm just here on business you know and she she's like yeah you know you Californians have come up here and you've you've raised our housing prices and now you know we locals can't afford a home here anymore so you know that's happened in a lot of states uh it's happened in idaho um it's happened in in, in parts of oregon parts of washington um the same thing has happened now in in texas and florida um housing prices there have gone um way up and um uh home construction has not kept pace with the inflow of people not just from california certainly but from other parts of the country as well um, and and so now they're seeing very high home prices. Um, nonetheless, maybe you you know you want to live there. By the way, it's not as if there aren't people moving to California. There certainly are. There are there are people who want to live in California. They they want to live. Uh, they like the climate, or they you know they like uh, the way life is here, or whatever. So where do you want to live is a fundamental question. Now, sort of sub questions to that is. If you have children, you're probably concerned with the quality of schools, right? So um, I live in Los Angeles, literally just south of Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills is one of the top public school districts in the country, right? And um, if you go, what is it, about five blocks north of me, you cross into Beverly Hills. So that that street there and uh off the top i can't remember the name of the street i think it's i want to say it's whitworth but i could be wrong anyway if you're south of whitworth we'll call it you're in los angeles if you're north you're in beverly hills and the diff last time i analyzed it and frankly it hasn't been for a while but the difference in home prices really comes down to what's called the capitalized value of paying for a high quality private education <laughs> so what i mean is let's say it would cost um $25,000 to send your child uh, to a, a good private school. And let's say, you know, we don't have on average two children, but but just we'll say two children, $50,000 a year. If you capitalize that value, meaning you can you convert it from uh, an expense into a, a, a value, you would probably have something in the neighborhood of... Uh, Let's see, fifty thousand times four, about somewhere between five hundred and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, 
And I think if you were to look, you would see that there's going to be a value gap somewhere in that range as you go from south of the street to north of the street into Beverly Hills, because in Beverly Hills, the public schools are so good. It's like sending your kids to a private school. In fact, um, my, my daughter uh, goes to Beverly Hills uh, school and um you know that was that that was that's a big savings in in private school tuition and when you talk to parents there and and the administrators everybody agrees that you know it's as good or better than most of the private schools so quality of schools obviously has a a, a big impact on what locate where you want to live if you have children okay crime rates so i live um, in, in, like I said, in Los Angeles, and if I go literally one block to the east, there's a major street there. And if you go on the other side of the street, the level of crime triples or quadruples. Okay, according to the, there's like this uh, app that I that that I have that shows you where crimes are happening. All right, and you can go on the um, L Los Angeles Police Department's website as well, and I think they report them there. I think that's where I saw it. But in any event. Crime rates can crime rates do differ considerably um, by by location. Also, the types of crimes that are committed um, in any particular location they may they make a big difference. So, you know, uh, what is acceptable for you in terms of risk to you, or and if you have a family to your family, you know, if if, if I were um, um, you know, a, 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 if I were 30 years younger, a single guy, you know, um, I, I think I would love living in, you know, downtown. It's very exciting. You can walk everywhere. Um, it's certainly not as safe from a crime standpoint, but there's other, the next category, amenities to living in downtown LA and, and, to, and in other down, downtown cores um, that, you know, you don't have if you're living in a more suburban location. Um, so on the on the other hand, there are amenities to living in a suburban location. So if you have children, there may be parks, um, other kinds of recreational amenities that are that are great for for kids that you you know really don't have um, in in a, in a downtown core. So these are just some of the issues to consider uh, or sub issues, if you will, to consider when you're looking at where do you want to live. Okay. But in the end, where you want to live, okay, is is going to in part determine uh, the some of the financial constraints, okay, and and so you know you you may not be able to afford to buy a house um, in your you know first choice location. So if that's the case. Um, do you want to trade off for a, a, a lesser desired location, but greater affordability, or would you would you rather you know rent in order to be um, in that location? Okay, so these are you know these are trade offs that we have to make. All right, next, um, personal readiness. Um, so these are. These are more ish, sort of almost like lifestyle issues, if you will. So first of all, how long do you plan to stay in the area that you're living? Um, if you're only if you're only planning to stay for a year or two, buying a home may not be a good decision. So it, it, it's not that the buying of the home itself is is bad, but if you have to sell it in two years, are you going to be able to get your money out? Keeping in mind that the cost to sell a home um, typically includes a brokerage commission, and while commissions are not fixed by law, and there is a lawsuit pending um, with, uh, I think it's, where was I, is it before the Supreme Court now? I don't remember. Anyway, there's a, there's, there's a major lawsuit pending against the um, uh, National Association of Realtors um, based on what um, the plaintiff's um, consider to be restraint of trade because of how they handle listings and commissions of 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 people who of agents who represent sellers. So uh, uh, it's not unusual to see a commission of five or six percent. Okay, so um, and then plus there are other costs of selling the property. So if you're only going to be in a location uh, for a, a couple of years. The value of the house has got to go up by at least five, six, seven percent for you to even break even. Okay, um, assuming that 
it made sense for you to buy ra rather than rent uh, to begin with, okay? And if you're if if bu if buying is more expensive than renting, but you decide to buy anyway, so not only do you have to make up the costs of selling the home, but also what you've lost um, owning the home during the period you've owned it. Now again, you may still say I, I prefer to own a home, and so you know this isn't a relevant issue to me, and that's perfectly fine. It's just I recommend you know you think about this issue up front rather than be surprised by what it means um, you know when you plan to move in a couple of years or whatever it is or a year or three years whatever it is okay so that's that's a that's a, a number one of a personal readiness issue the second one is there's there's a lot more responsibility of home ownership than there is to being a renter okay. First of all, all the costs of owning and maintaining the property fall on you, right? I mean, and it's not just paying your loan and your property taxes and your insurance. There's also maintenance costs and arranging all the maintenance, right? Getting, finding the contractors, getting the bids, supervising the work, all of that, okay? Whereas when you rent, you may not have to um, pay for maintenance, or, or if certainly in most cases, you're not going to pay for large maintenance. Okay. You may pay for minor things. And many times you may not have to supervise the maintenance either. Okay. Now I, I know for myself, I, I rent the house that I live in and um, my, my landlord does not live here in Los Angeles. He, and he lives in Northern California. It's, it's too far away for him to, you know, for me to expect him to supervise maintenance for this house. So, you know, we've had an agreement that's worked very well for, uh, gosh, I've been here for almost 10 years now. And and I just, um, you know, when, when, when something needs to be done with the house, like recently I had to have the main drain line in front of the house replaced. And there, there was no way, uh, you know, for me to Put the burden on him. Well, you got to take care of this. I mean, what, what, what a jerk I would be. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I called him up and I said, Hey, here's what's going on. Here's what I've checked out. Here's the information I got from the plumbers. This is what they're recommending. Um, you know, what do you think? And, you know, he agreed that the right thing was for the drain line to be replaced. And so, so I said, look, you know, here's what I've got. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, supervise and make sure it's done right and keep you up to date. Um, you know, help you out there. And he's like, you know, thanks. I appreciate that. Right. Um, but then the flip side is that, you know, we work together. Um, and so I have a nice place to live. Um, and, and as a result too, you know, I really don't have to worry about, um, I know some people have, you know, kind of landlord never want to fix anything. Um, and look, it is a pain in the neck to maintain a property. Um, so my attitude is, you know, I want to sort of, you know, work together with the, the fellow who owns the house. He's a very, very nice guy. Um, and, and, and we have a really good relationship, right? But um, nonetheless, I don't really, while I have some of the responsibilities that would normally go with home, home ownership, I don't have, you know, nearly as many. So, um, you know, is that something that you want to take on, right? Um, and, and that's something that you want to, to decide that, and, and they come down to um, financial responsibilities, time responsibilities, and what you might call sort of the aggravation, right, of responsibilities. Um, the, you know, those are the, those are the, um, those are the sort of categories, if you will. And then finally, uh, do you feel like you have a secure enough income to justify owning a house, right? Um, you know, are you are you secure in your job or in your business that that your your income is going to be there and it's not going to um, uh, go down uh, significantly, such that um, owning the home is going to become a, 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 a very a big strain on you? Okay. Um, now, you know, and and by the way, um, let's say you're a married couple. Is, you know, is one parent going to stay home, one person going to stay home and raise children? And so then, you know, the burden of bringing home the bacon, so to speak, I know you think that's funny, bring home the bacon for a rabbi. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't resist. Um, so, you know, the, the, the responsibility for, you know, income is, is on only one, one person, right? That's very different than having a dual income household, which is much more common today, certainly than, you know, when I was a kid. So, 
Um, how secure is your income? And by the way, you, you may not have a super secure income. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy a house. All it means is you should recognize the additional risk that you're taking on by buying a house when you don't feel particularly secure about your income. Now, by the way, you may have assets that in a pinch, you know, you can fall back on to maintain um, ownership uh, of the home. So then the fact that your income isn't particularly secure may not be that big a deal. You, you may be perfectly comfortable. Again, these are all individual decisions, but but um, issues that I that I encourage you to think about in advance before you make a decision about owning, buying, or renting. Okay, and then finally, so um, financial readiness. So this really comes down to. Um, four issues. Number one, do you have the down payment if necessary? Two, your, what is your credit score and how's that going to affect um, your ability to get a loan and, and the terms of the loan? What's your debt to income ratios? I'll talk about that in, in a minute. And then what's your total monthly cost? So let's talk about each of these in just a, a, a little bit of detail. So it used to be that um, to, to buy a house, you typically put down 20% uh, of the purchase price. So if a house costs, and, and I know there's no house for $100,000 anymore, but just using a simple example, if a house costs $100,000, so some, you know, you'd, you'd put down $20,000, you'd borrow $80,000, okay? And, you know, so then the question was, did you have, do you have the $20,000, right? Um, now, of course, where the median home price is around $400,000, a 20% down payment is $80,000. That's that's a lot of money. I mean, there that's real money, as, as we used to joke um, when I was more actively in the real estate business. So, you know, do you have the down payment or do you have some other means for borrowing money to buy a house that doesn't require a, a down payment or at least as large a down payment, okay? So for example, if you're in the military or you're a military veteran, so you have, um, in most cases, you're gonna be eligible for a VA loan. And a VA loan essentially allows you to buy a house with no money down. Now there will be some costs, so it's not, it's not cash free in the sense of you don't need to have any money at all to buy the house, but you don't need a down payment. You'll just need really closing costs. Now the closing costs on a VA loan typically will be a little bit more than a conventional loan, but as compared to a down payment plus closing costs, far, 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 far lower, okay? Now there used to be a lot of zero, um, you know, zero down payment uh, home loan programs around, um, you know, in, in the searching I've done, I haven't really seen too many of them anymore, um, if any. Um, there is the, now there is the FHA loan program where the down payments around three percent, and various states have um, home uh, buying programs for different groups of people. So you, if you qualify for one of those, so you may be, be able to buy a house with a you know, much lower down payment. But keep in mind that. As your down payment goes down, the size of your monthly payment is going to increase, okay? Um, and that's because the loan amount is going to be larger. And in some cases, the lower the down payment, the higher the interest rate, okay? So there is a trade-off between the two. So, you know, when you look at fi financial readiness, first of all, do you have the down payment? Really, do you have the cash? Because you're going to need down payment plus co closing costs to buy. Second. What is your credit score and how is that going to impact your ability to borrow and your cost to borrow? So we're going to look at this a little bit more when I go get into the um, into the uh, the actual you know running of numbers, okay? But like if you have a credit score of seven eighty or higher, I mean you're you're pretty much gold, okay? That's that's anything above 780 I think for the most part is considered excellent and you're good to go um you know others will say oh above 760 um you know it 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 varies a little bit okay um and I'm, I'm not going to get into what credit scores are hopefully you 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 at least know a little bit about them I am planning on doing a show um I don't remember exactly when but in the somewhat near future talking about uh credit scores um, so that you can understand them better. 
Okay, uh, debt to income ratio. So most lenders are going to look at what is the percentage of your monthly payments on debt versus your gross monthly income. So let's just take a, a, a quick example. Let's say you make $5,000 a month and currently you've got a car loan payment of $500 a month. You have other living expenses, but in terms of debts, the only debt you have is the car loan, okay? So $5,000 a month uh, gross income, $500, uh, $500 a month car payment. So your debt to income ratio is um, uh, 10 to one. So you have 10 times the income that you have of debt. Another way of putting it is you have a 10% debt to income ratio. In other words, your debt payments are 10% of your income. Okay. Most lenders, they, they're going to look at somewhere in the low to mid 30s for your total debt to income ratio, including your proposed um, loan payment for, the, for your house. OK, so if you have a lot of debts already, maybe you have a car loan, you owe balances on some credit cards and you're already at, you know, 20, 22 percent. Are you going to be able to borrow enough money to be able to afford the house? OK, so that's why you want to look at debt to income ratio. All right. Finally, monthly cost. And, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier. In addition to your loan payment, you're going to have property taxes, insurance, and there may be you know, more than one type of insurance here in California. You're gonna to have to have earthquake insurance in many cases. You may have to have flood insurance as well, right? So there's, there can be a number of different types of insurance that you need plus maintenance cost, right? So when you look at the total monthly cost to own a home, do you feel financially ready to take that on? Okay, so those are the issues. I think that's it, right? Yep, okay. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stop the share here. Now we're gonna look at just the number side of it, the financial issues. And where is it? Here it is. Okay. Uh, oops, nope, wrong one. Okay, this should be it. Let's see. I'm not sure why it's doing this. <laughs> um, oh, there it is. Okay, I see. Uh, let me uh, let me close this so it's not distracting me in the background. All right. So here is the the form um, that I that I put together in order to um, analyze um, the different issues related to. Um, making a decision about um, buying or renting or buying a home. Okay. Now, um, just so you see how the form works real quickly. So you anywhere where there's a, a box like this, um, we have to fill in the information. So the price of the home, the percentage of down payment, um, the interest rate for the loan, the loan term, property taxes, insurance, annual maintenance cost, closing costs, um, and, and, and a couple of other things. And you see right here, these are links where you can get the information that you need, okay? So let's start out by finding a home that we want to buy, okay? So, and I've got a, let's, let's see, let's, gotta, gotta change what we're doing here. Okay, so this is a, this is a website called realtor.com. There are others, there's Redfin, there's Zillow. There's, there's a number of different websites um, that um, uh, um, you know you can use that you have access to um, in, in getting information to buy a home. So um, we were talking about Texas and Florida earlier, um, and we are also, well we talking about a lot of states. So let's. Um, how about if we use um, uh, Coeur d'Alene? Oops, I spelled it wrong. Let's see. Hopefully, is it Coeur? Yeah, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I don't know, that that sounds good, right? Um, oh, and see, I was just saying there's no houses for $100,000. This is actually, this looks like a manufactured house. It's really like a, a house trailer. So um, uh, this, this this looks pretty cool, right? Look at this house right here. Let's, let's take a look at this. This looks nice. So it looks like it's overlooking a lake. 
Um, no, I don't want to be okay. And, and uh, let's see. Wow, there's an overview. Yeah, it's it's there's a lake. And um, I'm not sure why they keep showing us the same picture. Um, but anyway, that's there it is. Wow, that you know, two car garage and looks like it has great views. Okay, so this house is $390,000. Okay, and it's uh, so we'll, I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the um the form okay and just for now let's look at it where there's a 20 percent down payment okay all right so um okay and i want to make sure let's see da, 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 da. okay yeah it was built in 1993 it's got a two-car garage okay and there there's the zip code okay all right so we found our house. I, I, obviously, it's not going to happen that quickly. I'm just, you know, doing a, uh, um, uh, just finding a house that we can. Okay, so that so, um, and I'm, I don't want to have to keep clicking back and forth um, between the different screens. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you the 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 form in just a minute. But with a three hundred ninety thousand dollar purchase price, a twenty percent down payment is seventy eight thousand dollars. Okay, so we're left with a loan amount of $312,000. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is, is look at mortgage rates. So um, there's a site called um, Nerd Wallet. Okay, it's it's really great. It has a lot of good things. And you'll see we're gonna use it several times. So we're gonna, first of all, take the zip code of um, where the property is. Okay, Kerr Lane. purchase price is um, $390,000. Okay. The down payment, I think we said was $78,000. Yep. Okay. Um, and, and see here on this particular one, they're saying 760 credit score is the top. Okay. And, and you can see it goes down. Let, let's just, let's just use an example where you, you have the top credit score. You want to get a 30 year fixed loan. Okay. So then you just click update results and it's going to give you what kind of interest rates um, it looks you looks like you can get. So you see here 7.7, I'm sorry, 7.75, 7.74, 7.875, 7.875. .75. Um, so they're all seven and three quarters to seven and seven eighths. This one's almost eight percent. So you know let's let's uh, let's think positive here. And let's say that um, you, you're going to get an interest rate of 7.75%. Okay. And it's going to be for a 30 year loan. All right. Now, by the way, if you look over here, you see it says more filters. Okay. Here you see it's a single family home, it's a primary residence, meaning you um, are going to live in it as opposed to here's your other choices secondary residence or an investment property because that's going to change the loan rates and here you, single family home versus a condo or a townhouse or maybe a two or three unit building see those are also going to change it okay uh, fha loan eligibility either you're eligible or not um, and then if you're a veteran if, if you are a veteran that you know you should click that because that'll give you um it, that'll give you a uh that, that will possibly give you a more favorable uh loan rate okay so now we've got loan rate now um the next thing we need to do is figure out what our property taxes are going to be okay so this is another website called smart asset and see here it's got um you enter your location and your assessed value okay and then and it'll tell you um uh, what but it'll estimate the property taxes. So here's Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Idaho, okay? And presumably your assessed value is going to be um, uh, the same as what you paid for the property, okay? So your annual property taxes are going to be $2,496. So you'll plug that in, okay? Next, you need to figure out what is your insurance going to cost. Okay. So you'll see we're going back to Nerd Wallet. Okay. And here you scroll down average homeowner's insurance rate by zip code. Okay. So select your state, which is Idaho. I passed it. There it is. Okay. Zip code. 
There's your zip code. And it's saying average home insurance rating in, in your zip code is $1,100. Okay. Now, I, I recognize that insurance rates can vary widely. Um, we're, we're getting here, you know, somewhat of a ballpark estimate. By the way, you could certainly, especially if you live in the area where you want to buy the house already, you may know someone who's in the insurance business and, and you could call them and say, hey, I'm I'm thinking of buying a house in this neighborhood, this size. Um, you know, what do you, can, would you, you know, give me just a rough estimate of insurance. I'm not going to hold you to it. And, and maybe your friend will help you out. Okay, finally, we're going to estimate maintenance cost. So the house has 3,564 square feet. So one way to estimate maintenance cost is at a dollar per square foot per year. So wait, what was that again? 34, 3564. Okay, so that comes out to a little less than $300 a month. All right. Now I'm going to I'm going to I am going to uh, switch over to the form so you can just see the progress that we're making now. Okay. So, here's what I've filled in so far. Our purchase price 390, 20% down payment which we said. So it automat and the form um, let me show you this. So when you when you fill in the the percentage of the down payment 20%, see the form will automatically calculate that for you. As well, when you fill in the interest rate and the um, term of the loan, this payment right here will automatically get calculated as well, okay? And then when you put in the annual cost of these expenses, the monthly expenses get calculated here. So the total, your total housing cost is $2,832 per month. However, that is not the um, total cost of owning a home. There are two other factors that have to be taken into account. One is something called the opportunity cost. So because you've put the money for the down payment into owning a house, you're no longer able to invest that money. Okay, so there's an opportunity cost in the loss of investment income you would get if you invested the $78,000. Now, those of you who are sharper saying, well, wait a minute, um, you might also lose appreciation of your capital. Yes, that's true. The 78,000 may increase in value, okay? But it also may decrease in value, okay? And now you say, well, but the home could increase or decrease in value, right? That's why I'm not gonna take those into account because they're, they're very hard to predict. OK, so we're just going to look at what kind of return are you giving up on the seventy eight thousand dollars that you otherwise could have invested. OK, and we're going to go back to Nerd Wallet. OK, and here I'm going to I'm going to go back to uh, I have to I have to figure out how you uh, <laughs> how you share two screens at the same time. Um, so I'm sorry. So actually, we're yeah. So we have to figure. So we have the down payment of seventy eight thousand dollars plus we have closing costs. That's additional cash, okay, that we have to pay in order to buy the house, okay. So this is going to estimate the closing costs. So so we said the house is we're paying three hundred ninety thousand dollars. We're putting seventy eight thousand dollars down, okay, and our interest rate is seven point. 75% and let's say there's no um there's no uh we're not going to pay what are called discount points okay okay we click next and it says estimated closing costs are $13,594 that's on top of your down payment okay so we're going to plug that into our form 13594 okay oops what did I do here? Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, I see. Okay, I've got it. Uh, let me let me correct the. See, it's a good thing you can't see the form. I I I, I made an error in it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna correct correct this real quickly. Oh, oops, no, no, no. 
Okay, there you go. All right, so um, closing costs are like I said, um, about $13,600, okay? So the total funds you would have been able to invest are over $91,000 between the down payment and the closing costs, okay? So um, now we're gonna look at what rate of return could you have gotten on that money, okay? So I'm gonna just look at a CD. Um, this is a very simple thing. Obviously you could put it in, you could put it in uh, mutual funds, you could put it in exchange traded funds, um, you could buy a piece of income property. There's lots of places you could put that money. I'm just doing this somewhat simply, okay? And if you're wondering, wait, you know, mutual funds, exchange traded funds. Um, if if you go to our YouTube channel, I did a show talking about what those are and how they work. So feel free to check that out. YouTube.com forward slash at the way to wow. Okay. So we've got we don't have a hundred thousand to invest. Um, but we do have fifty thousand plus to advance uh, to invest, and let's say you know, um, let, let's just set it at four years, okay? Um, so here's what we've got in terms of rates. So you've got five, five and a half, and five and a half percent, okay? So let's say that you're giving up a five and a half percent return on your money. Okay, that works out to four hundred and twenty dollars a month. Okay, let's let's switch back to the form now, so you can see this part. Okay, so you see here's our down payment seventy eight thousand. Here's our closing costs thirteen five ninety four for a total of ninety one uh, five ninety four. Okay, at a five and a half percent annual interest rate means we're giving up four hundred and twenty dollars a month. Okay. All right. Now, the other thing we need to adjust for is there are tax advantages to um, owning a home. Okay. And, and those advantages are that certain expenses of owning a home, certain parts of your housing costs are deductible. Uh, you can itemize them on your tax return. Okay. So, first of all, you can itemize, you can deduct the loan, the, I'm sorry, the interest portion of your loan payment. So you notice up here, the loan payment is 2235. You can't deduct the entire payment because part of that is principal, okay? But you can deduct the, the interest portion, which for the first payment anyway, is $2,015. Now, again, if you're, if you're really sharp, you'll say, well, wait a minute, but it's gonna decline each month. And it is, it's gonna decline a little bit each month now, as the loan gets older and older, it's going to decline by more as more and more principal is paid off. But for the purposes of this analysis, we can simplify it and say um, the loan interest paid monthly is about $2,015. Okay. Your property taxes typically are also tax deductible. Okay. So that's $92 a month. And your insurance is deductible, $297 a month. Now, no, oops, wait. Uh, I got the wrong. What did I do here? Oh, I, I put the wrong things. Okay. Property taxes and insurance. There we go. Okay. Now, um, notice that your maintenance expenses are not deductible. Okay. So what it costs you to maintain your house, you cannot deduct those expenses. Only mortgage interest, property taxes, and insurance. Okay. Now there are certain other things, but they typically won't come up. Hopefully they won't like a um, uninsured casualty loss for the house. That means the house was damaged and there wasn't insurance to pay for it. You might be able to deduct, deduct the cost of repairing the house then, but that's unusual. And we, you know, we really hope that that wouldn't happen to you. Okay, so your um, deductible um, monthly expenses are $2,315, okay? Now, what we need to know is what is your tax rate? Now, by the way, this is not what's called your marginal tax rate. So just a, a quick primer on how taxes work, income taxes, that is. So income is taxed according to brackets. So if your income is between you know, this much and this much, the tax rate is whatever it is. And then if it's a dollar above that to the next level, it's tacked at the, at, the, at the next higher rate, okay? However, 
we it's not it, it's not that your entire income is taxed at the higher rate it's just the amount above the first bracket is taxed so you can be in a uh you know 28% tax bracket but that doesn't mean that your tax rate is 28% because everything below the 28% tax bracket is taxed at a lower rate so what we need to figure out is what is your overall tax rate? Okay, and we're going to go back to Nerd Wallet. They have a tax rate calculator that you can use. It's it's really pretty nifty. Where is it? Here we go. Okay, and it, it's just it's 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 just going to ask for real basic information. Okay, so it do, it doesn't take very long. Um, but, but let's, so let's just say you're married filing jointly. Okay, step number one, and let's say your income is. 95,000 a year, either on your own or you between you and your spouse, that's your income. Okay. How old were you January 1st? So let's say you're you're 32. Okay. How many dependents will you claim? Let's say one. Okay. Traditional IRA contributions. Let's say you're going to contribute uh, $200 a month. Okay. Your, your company has an IRA. And let's say, I mean, it has a 401k plan. Um, and let's say you're not going to contribute to an IRA in addition. Okay. So um, your deductions then are going to, and this is your annual deduction. If you look on the form, you'll see it's 27,776. 27,776. Now, by the way, that's higher than the standard deduction. So it will make, you will have some kind of uh, tax savings. Okay. All right. So click next. Um, and you don't have to fill in taxes paid or withheld. It's not going to change what ends up happening. Okay, your effective tax rate is 11.4%. See, even though your, your um, tax bracket is going to be higher than that, once you take into account the portions that are taxed at lower rates, the overall rate, and, and, and by the way, your deduction, so your overall rate is 11.4%. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the form now this is the last time we're switching back and forth are you getting dizzy uh i, I am a little bit so 11.4 percent oops oops what did i do here oh 11.4 percent okay and you see here then taxes saved is 264 dollars okay so the total cost of owning a home is just under three thousand dollars okay Got that? All right. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at renting a home, okay, and see what that is. So there's a couple places I, I've provided here, apartments.com, rent.com. Let's go to rent.com. We'll just try that. Okay. And, and actually, I guess I'm going to have to switch one more time. I forgot about this. Uh, here we go. Okay. So let's go to uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Okay, and there it searches. Okay, and here's a property right here. Um, it's a three bedroom. Let's see, three bedroom, two bath. I'm not sure what this means. Okay. Oh, that's an apartment. Oh, okay. So let's look at the filters. That's right. So da 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 da. -da. Um, okay, so we want a house. And okay, we want houses. Okay, and um, minimum square feet. Uh, let's see, it was well, okay, sixteen hundred. And it would be nice if you could go higher because the house we're looking at is thirty six hundred square feet. That's okay. That's what we've got to work with. Um, three plus bedrooms. Um, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, three plus bedrooms. I think it was a three bedroom, three bath house, right? Let's see. Uh, yeah, three plus three. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. and three bed. Oops, three bedrooms. Okay, price range. No. Um, and it's going to show five results. Okay, so. Um, and here's here's a map. Okay, you you know if if you know the area well enough, you'll be able to plot you know where where the houses you're looking to buy. 
Okay. Um, and here you see, let's see, uh, Ridgeview Drive. That sounds familiar. Where was this one? Oh, Fernand Terrace. Okay. Fernand Terrace. So here's one. It's $4,500, new lower price. Here's Grouse Meadow, $2,950, right? Um, here's Pyrenees Loop, $2,350. 4,200 and 2,800. So here's the interesting thing. Four of the five houses are close to or higher than the cost to own. Okay, we'll go, this is the last time we'll go back to the form. Okay, remember that it was 2,988 and there's, you know, you could say, well, the comparable to rent, kind of the mid, the median is, is 2,950. Well, so from a financial standpoint, okay, it's, you know, there doesn't seem to be a big incentive to go one way or the other. So other issues now may come into play, such as, are you ready for home ownership? Do you have the 78 or the, the you know, 91 plus thousand dollars for a down payment and closing costs? Do you want to take on the responsibility of home ownership? Do you like this as a place to live? Does it have schools for your children? Personally, just your lifestyle, do you want to own a house, right? All of those are potential issues then, since in this particular case, okay, the, the financial side of things really aren't that much different. Now, you, you, you know, it might turn out that um, maybe the higher end was, was more appropriate. So it was, you know, to, to rent a house in the same area is $4,200. Wow. So then financially, it makes a lot more sense to, um, you know, to, to buy a house. Okay. Now, by the way, typically you won't see this. Typically, you're not going to see that it's much more expensive to rent a house than to buy it. But there are cases where it can happen depending on where the market is at. Okay. So, um, and you know, and, and it might be, by the way, that the the one that's most similar is the one that's renting for twenty three fifty. So if that's the case, and and you'll have to, you know, you'll have to kind of do the research of the houses to see which are most similar. So in that case, it's going to cost you about six hundred and change more per month to own a house than to rent. Okay, and you may and you may you may say, nope, I you know I can't afford that extra money. I don't want to pay it. Or you may say, you know what? To have my own place, to be able to do with it what I want, um, I would I would rather spend the extra money. Maybe the house will go up in value, and so um, in the end, I'm not really going to lose you know six hundred six hundred and fifty dollars or whatever six hundred dollars a month. Um, so those are all. That's where we would go back to all those issues that we talked about at the beginning of the show in deciding whether you want to rent or buy. So we are just a couple of minutes over time. I don't want to keep you uh, past time. So I'm going to leave it off here. Um, suffice it to say, um, if you would like um, a copy of the form, um, I don't know if I can set it up to download from um, uh, our, our YouTube channel, um, but my contact information will be you know, in the in the show notes. So feel free to send me an email or or post on um social media um i wouldn't post your contact information on social media but if you want to post hey can i get a copy of the um of of the uh, anal analysis form um I, I can you know direct message you so that privately i can get your information so i can send you the form um but i'm i'm happy to do that if you have any questions uh comments feel free to email me feel free to post on social media um, any observations, um, anything you think I've missed, by all means, let me know. I'm always open to hear how I can improve um, what I'm doing. But I thank you very much for, for tuning in today. I hope you found this both informative and useful. I, you know, It's one of the biggest decisions we'll make in our financial lives, really in our lives overall. So I, I encourage you to really um, you know, dive into it. Um, and the hour that we spent together is um, in some ways, only scratching the surface. There's lots and lots to talk about. Um, but but that, that, that's, that's it for today. So again, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, that's our final show for this week. So next week, Monday, 10 a.m., 
uh, Trust and Estates Weekly. These times are all Pacific time. Uh, Tuesday at 11 a.m. is Business Lessons from the Military. And then uh, seven days from today on Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. is the next edition of People Making Money. So again, thanks very much for tuning in. Wishing you a wonderful rest of the week and a very relaxing and restorative weekend. And signing off, Marie, darling, you are my belle. All the best, folks. <laughs>